so many weird things happen in the Pacific Northwest that, comparatively, a mysterious hole in the ground seems pretty innocuous. At first. Next to numerous Bigfoot sightings and miles of giant mushrooms, the phenomenon of Mel's Hole seems pretty straightforward until you realize that it also happens to be a bottomless pit that brings animals back from the dead. Mel's Hole is one of the most mysterious places in the state of Washington. The mystery of Mel's Hole all started with an interview on Coast to Coast AM radio when a caller identifying himself as Mel Waters claimed that he found a real-life bottomless pit on his property. As you can imagine, things only got creepier from there. Pet cemetery creepy. Today, this supernatural phenomenon in Washington, like so many others, straddles the line between being famous and elusive. Curious? Unnerved both? If supernatural entertainment intrigues you, keep listening for more facts about Mel's Hole, its rise to notoriety, and the bizarre secrets said to hide somewhere in its bottomless depths. Though Mel Waters, if he ever existed at all, is credited with having brought attention to the pit, the legend itself began long before he came around. Local residents, authorities, and indigenous tribes knew of the hole for decades before Waters ever bought the property. As the story goes, the pit was about nine feet in diameter, with walls constructed out of hand-placed bricks stretching 15 feet down before transitioning into dirt and darkness. Known popularly as the Devil's Hole, the locals all agreed that there was something rather unsettling about the hole's existence. But no one cared, nor wanted, to think too hard about what that something might be. Manistash Ridge residents instead used the hole as a garbage dump and decided not to question the eerie fact that the pit never appeared to fill up. According to Waters' interview with Coast to Coast AM host Art Bell, once Waters realized that the hole wasn't showing any signs of filling up, he decided to test it. His plan was to bring thousands of feet of fishing line and a sturdy fishing rod out to the hole, add weight to the fishing line, and then measure how far down it went before hitting the bottom. By the end of his test, Waters got more than he bargained for. The hole had no bottom and if a bottom does exist, it's deep enough that the weighted line failed to go slack after 80,000 feet. Neither Waters nor anyone else has ever confirmed reaching the bottom. People who have been brave enough to approach the pit all noticed something peculiar about the area's wildlife, or more aptly, the lack thereof. Animals obviously hated the hole, and would do their best to stay as far away from it as possible. Waters even reported that his own dogs refused to approach the hole. When he tried to bring them closer to it, they dug their paws into the ground in protest. Other visitors even took note of the fact that birds avoided flying directly over it, and no other small animals ever appeared near it. According to various reports, the only sign of wildlife were piles of bones strewn around the mouth of the pit. After Waters allegedly lowered 80,000 feet of fishing line into the hole on his property to try and locate the bottom, he suspected that there might be something more sinister about the hole than its infinite depth. Waters began performing a variety of other tests in an attempt to better understand this seemingly endless pit. When he yelled directly into the pit, he heard silence instead of an echo. And if he brought a handheld radio near the hole, it would play music that sounded decades out of date. Further tests were conducted at a location known as the Second Devil's Hole, a pit in Nevada believed to have properties identical to those of the Washington Hole. When a bucket of ice was lowered about 1,500 feet down into the hole, the ice had changed by the time it was brought back up, it felt inexplicably warm, seemed to dry out the air near it, and even became flammable. Mel Waters' interview with Art Bell on Coast to Coast AM brought the hole into public consciousness, and one of the stories he told during the call was absolutely chilling. According to Mel, 
locals have used the hole to get rid of anything from old equipment to dead cattle. But apparently throwing something down the hole didn't guarantee that it would stay there. During the interview, Mel claimed that when one of the neighbor's dogs passed away, his neighbor brought the dog to the hole to get rid of it. The neighbor then allegedly told Mel that after he'd done so, he later saw his dog running in the forest, alive and well, and still wearing the collar that had been around its neck when its body had been brought to the hole. One of the most skin-crawling stories about Mel's hole details the fate of a sheep that Mel Waters claims to have lowered into the pit as one of the many experiments he conducted. The sheep, like Mel's dogs and other local animals, was absolutely terrified of the pit and Mel had to tranquilize it in order to get it close enough to the mouth of the hole. Curious after hearing about the strange fate of a bucket of ice that apparently became warm and flammable after being lowered into a similar hole, Mel decided to do the same thing with the sheep. What happened to the sheep, though, was even stranger. When Mel hoisted the sheep back up out of the hole, it was dead, and it appeared to have been cooked from the inside. Even stranger was that something appeared to be moving inside it, and when it was cut open, Mel saw something that he described as resembling a fetal seal with human eyes staring back at him. He immediately threw the creature back into the hole. When he told the story to curious neighbors, some said that they too had seen a similar creature around the hole before. Whatever it is, it may be the only thing that can get in and out of Mel's hole. Mel Waters' property in Washington is home to the original pit that spawned the legend, but it's not the only one. Another hole is said to exist in Nevada that displays properties very similar to those attributed to the original Mel's hole. According to Mel, he has visited the second hole as well, and it's every bit as bizarre and fascinating as the one found on his property. Birds of an unidentifiable species have been seen circling the Nevada pit, and when Mel attempted to shoot one down for study, he found that the bullets seemed to ricochet right off of them. If bulletproof birds are any indication, the Nevada hole is likely hiding just as many supernatural secrets as Mel's. The alleged interaction between Mel Waters and the U.S. government, if true, means that Mel's hole is more important than even Mel himself realized. According to Mel's story, government agents attempted to prevent him from entering his own property, claiming that a plane had crashed there. When he refused to believe their story, they abruptly switched tactics and offered to lease his land from him for $250,000 on one condition. If he accepted, he would have to leave the country. Mel, being in dire straits at the time, accepted. He then moved to Australia and didn't return for several years. When he did, government agents insisted that they had bought his land. Locals then informed Mel that the area around the pit had been guarded by black vans and helicopters since he left. After Mel Waters' first interview on Coast to Coast AM, no one had any reason to question his identity. Then his story started to strike a chord. Coast to Coast listeners were enthralled by stories of the pit, so Mel decided to give a second interview. But, paradoxically, the more Mel stepped into the spotlight, the more interesting he and his story seemed to become. He'd been featured on Coast to Coast AM several times before followers of the story began to search local records for his name in hopes of determining the exact location of the hole, and they found nothing. No property transfers had been conducted in the area during the time that Mel claimed to have sold the land to the government, and no one named Mel Waters had voted, paid taxes, or even lived there. Whether Mel was a hoax or a pseudonym, Mel Waters was ultimately consumed by the mystery of the whole himself. Among the Coast to Coast AM listeners who took an interest in the story of Mel's hole was a geologist named Jack Powell. After hearing Mel describe the characteristics of the pit on the radio, Powell thought he recognized the hole as being an abandoned mine shaft that he was familiar with from his childhood. But when Mel revealed that he had lowered at least 80,000 feet of fishing line into the hole in order to test its depth, 
Powell realized that the story was much stranger than he had thought. A hole that deep would not be physically possible. Based on Powell's geological expertise, this can only mean that Mel Waters designed a spectacular hoax, or that among the many mysteries presented by Mel's hole is a localized geographical anomaly. <laughs>